All right. On a windy rooftop up here, um, joining me now, White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows. Um, Mark, good to see you tonight. Thank you for being here. Great so to you, be with you, Martha. Thanks. Uh, you, you hear Joe Biden's argument. He says that this is Donald Trump's America um, and that the violence in the street goes back to the sort of chaotic reign of the last several years. What do you say to that? Well, I think Joe Biden is continuing the, with the words that actually are not backed up by, by the facts. Uh, Joe Biden's the one that has applauded those who have protested saying defund the police. He's also the one that each and every time where we start talking about restoring law and order, but, but more importantly, making our communities safe, He's the one, the first one to blame the law enforcement officers, not the rioters or the looters. And, and I can tell you, it wasn't Joe Biden from his basement that sent uh, actual National Guard uh, troops and law enforcement officers into Kenosha, Wisconsin. It was the president of the United States. He's all about restoring law and order and making sure that our communities are safe. But he's also a man of action, not just of words like we just heard. So as you know, Joe Biden would say that he is not for defunding the police, um, but on the record, he has said that he would reallocate some yeah. of those police funds to other areas. And I'll let you take that on yeah, uh, with him another that, time. That's Washington speak for defunding. You know, you can't reallocate so. from one bucket without taking from that bucket to put in a different bucket. That's so let's be, let's be real clear about that and let him go ahead and condemn it. I haven't heard a single condemnation from him or his running mate on all these people are saying defunding the police. This president has spoken up loudly each and every time. Well, I think uh, all of America hopes that we'll see the opportunity for this debate to happen between these two gentlemen. Nancy Pelosi suggested today that she doesn't really think that it should happen at all, the debates, which obviously are a tradition going back for many decades. Here's what she said. I don't think that there should be any debates. If Joe Biden asked you what I thought about it, I don't think that he should dignify that conversation with Donald Trump. She went on to say, Mark, that um, she thought that, that reporters should do individual interviews with the two of them. That would be a more civilized way to do this. What do you say? Well, the reason why she doesn't want to debate is because 47 years of rhetoric is all Joe Biden has versus four years of a real record that this president has. Listen, I mean, it's obvious what they want to do. They want to try to hide the vice president of, of the Obama-Biden administration in a basement as long as they can so there's no tough questions so that you don't get to ask the tough questions or anyone else in the hopes that they can hoodwink the American people. Listen, let's have the debates. But even without the, de the debates, this president's record will ultimately make sure that the people show up on November right. 3rd. Let, and let me ask you something. You yeah. know, you worked on the Hill, and yeah. what do you read into what she's saying? Do you see her sending a signal here? Is she trying to open the door for a conversation where there are no debates? What do you see happening here? Well, I, I had a 25-minute phone call with uh, Nancy Pelosi today about trying to provide enhanced unemployment to people that are hurting, about helping small businesses, about sending money to our schools, K through 12, and making sure that we have additional resources for those that need daycare. And what did we get from her? is 25 minutes of nothing. And, and so she's hoping that she can spin her story just like Bo Joe Biden is hoping to spin his story. But I think really the ultimate thing is they're afraid of the record. Listen, 47 years of, of service and you have two bills of which the, the vice president, Joe Biden, actually passed, one of which he's running away from and that we're having to fix. And so, listen, give me the accomplishments from the first hundred days of this president up against the accomplishments right. of the last 47 years. All right. Um, any chance, you know, where we've become used to this week seeing surprises from the president, any chance that there's a surprise announcement tonight along the lines of an executive order or something that was signed, anything along those lines? Because you're the chief of staff in your role now. Yeah, and Martha, the great thing about a chief of staff is he keeps those secrets a secret. And so if I told you and the millions of people tuning mm -hmm. in right now, it wouldn't be a secret. So, so that's not you a need to You need to tune in for just an unbelievable final night of the Republican National Convention. We will be, and we, we hear there are lots of protesters gathering outside. Are you guys concerned about that? Well, I haven't heard any protesters, but, you know, at, at the same time, I'm, I'm not too concerned about it. Uh, we're, we're well prepared for, for any condition. All right. Uh, Mark Meadows, Chief of Staff at the White House, thank you very much, sir. Good to have you with us tonight.
Thank you, Martha.